Mitro and Stretch. These two Team Liquid members are top-notch Fortnite pros. Mitro's widely regarded as one of the all-time greats, and while Stretch's reputation is still growing, he's been just absolutely dominating the competition this season. So, you know, there's just so much that he's, you know, no doubt a top contender for the current best in all of North America. But who's the better Team Liquid member? If they were to score off in the same event, who would win? It's NA versus EU in this one, man. Let's find out. What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Bunch of Crunch Army. Hope you guys are good, man. Hope your spirits are lifted up and, uh, man, you're feeling great about life. So, to decide who's better, Mitchell or Stretch, we're going to be analyzing five different categories. Mechanics, come on, solos, team play, game sense, and all the important clutch factor. We're going to be handing out between 1 to 10 pro guys points for their skills in each area. And at the end, we're going to tally our results to find out who comes out on top. I can already tell this one's going to be close. What do you guys think? Is it going to be Mitro or Stretch? Let us know in the comments. So, first category up is Mechanics, which primarily covers aiming, building, and editing. And right away, it's hard to have any complaints about these two. We're talking about a pair of naturally gifted individuals who put in thousands of hours improving their world-class skills. So, of course, their mechanics are going to be, like, among the best. But in terms of differences, all right, we've noticed Stretch's mechanics are a tad bit on the quicker side. His building and editing speed has always been very fast, but in the past few months, it's like it's evolved or something to the point where he'll pull out some of the quickest builds we've ever seen. And when it comes to aiming, his trackings are real smooth. Even at really like long distances or on hard to, you know, hit targets, his AR aim are on point. But the same quick play style applies whenever he goes for flicks. They're just so fast, man. Like you can't even see any screen movement. It's as if he's just instantly hitting his target. Look, if we're being honest, Stretch's quick play style tends to be more prone to error. And we notice that a lot. He'll try to edit too fast and he'll mess up. Or he'll go for a flick too quickly and he'll miss. And I'm not trying to say this playstyle doesn't work or anything like that, because obviously Stretch has had tremendous success. But in terms of consistency, I feel as if he still has room for improvement. In contrast, Mitro, while also you know quick in many regards, is more deliberate with his mechanics. He doesn't value speed as much and doesn't ever do more than he needs to, which leads to fewer mistakes from what we've noticed. Even with his aim, Mitro isn't afraid to take a split second and just make sure his shot's on point before firing. And when it comes to landing shots, that's a crucial step. Basically, even though Mitro's capable, it's not about the speed or flashiness to him. It's the end result that ultimately matters the most, all right? The only times Mitro will be quick is when he's going for one of his classic pre-fires. But even in those cases, it's not so much about quick or careless shots. It's more about predicting and shooting in anticipation. All right, so with all that being said, deciding on who's better mechanically is still very tough. Both Stretch and Mitro are in a state right now where they're just really good. <laughs> Overall, Stretch can perform at a slightly higher level, but in the end, consistency is what we think matters more. Thus, for mechanics, we're going to be giving Stretch 8.5 points and Mitro gets 9. All right, on to the next category, my friends. It's time for solos. How well do these two perform when the pressure rests only on them? Well, Mitro's always been sort of a solo legend. I mean, going way back in the day, he was easily one of the best EU during the skirmish and Winter Royale days. Way ahead of the pack, right? But I feel as if Mitro's solo reign really began around the end of Season X. He was W King and getting top placements in Cash Cup after Cash Cup. And those placements continue well into Chapter 2, with his most recent solo win being a Platform Cup in May. As for his performance in the FNCS Invitational, he finished 18th place, which isn't bad or anything like that, but other than that, Mitro failed to qualify for the DreamHack Open in July. One missed qualification obviously doesn't matter all that much, but given it's the only significant solo event in the past two months, we gotta be a little critical here. Okay, so what about Stretch though? Well, historically, his solo placements haven't been the hottest, but toward the end of 2019, he started placing better and better. First in cash cups, but then quite well for himself in the FNCS Invitational, where he popped off both qualifier weeks and then finished 19th in the finals. But what we really need to talk about is Stretch's recent run in the DreamHack event. He played incredibly and finished first place in such a dominating matter, over 50 points higher than second place and 100 points higher than third. 
How did he do it? His average placement per match was seventh, man. <laughs> For context, all right. Doves, who came in second, placed 23rd on average. So Stretch made it to the end game every single game. You guys might not realize it, but to make it that far, nearly every single match requires an incredible amount of planning and consistent execution. So really, you know, if we're gonna look at every single solo performance ever, Mito's hard to beat, but the past is in the past. We've got to look at more recent events, man. And in this case, you can't deny Stretch has been killing solos lately. Despite how much he hates playing them, you know, he's still killing it, man. So for solo, Stretch is getting nine and a half points and Mitro is getting eight and a half. But what about that format that doesn't have you want to rip your hair out? Like for our team play, how well do Stretch and Mitro perform with others? Started with Mitro, I would say he's always been regarded as more of a team player. With teammate after teammate after teammate, back in the skirmish days, it didn't matter who we played with, he would just absolutely slay. Then once he and Mongrel started duoing, it was nothing but success, all right? They qualified for the World Cup in the first week and finished sixth in the grand finals. After that, it was trios. And I mean, Mitro was literally a part of the most iconic trio the world ever saw. They destroyed every single team during the trios FNCS qualifier weeks, which is something on a level we just don't see anymore. And a massive part of that was due to Mitro's teamwork and comms. He'd know exactly what to do and how to tell his teammates to do it. Even though he looked back and laughed and their hilarious call outs like dead, dead, dead and free kill, they were actually very effective. Quick to the point, which is something many other pro players took note on afterwards. But when it comes to stretch, you know he's been a great teammate when Zayden Sav, arguably the best duo in any history, pick him to be their third. And now their team is rolling. After winning the Lachi Cup and placing consistently high in cash cups, they're easily a top three team in NA East. But if we were being honest, we're not sure how much of that has to do with Stretch's abilities as a teammate though. It's almost like his high individual skill paired with Zayt and Saf's unparalleled chemistry is really what's leading to their immense success. I'm using a lot of big words, I love this. That being said, <laughs> like we don't want to like take away like anything, you know, of Stretch's teamwork skills too much. He's got to wear accounts. Believe me, overall, this one is a toughie to decide, but we think that Mitro's proven track record is something that really can't be ignored here. I know we said, you know, the past is the past, but it still counts for something. And Mitro's recent performances have not been lousy. All right. He's one of the most sought after pros in the EU for a reason because of his ability to work with and drive teams to their full potential. So for team play, we're giving Stretch eight and a half points and Mitro's getting nine and a half. Team play is, after all, man, one of the toughest things to learn and I'm sure plenty of you guys feel the same. All right, guys, our next category is game sense and knowledge. How smart are Mitro and Stretch? Do they understand Fortnite, you know, at its highest level? And how creative can they be when their hands are forced? Okay, on the one hand, Micho's always been a mastermind when it comes to game knowledge. Though not an IGL, he's typically like the one calling shots in team modes because he understands the right moves to make at the right time. Whether that's W King, disengaging, going for height, dropping down or whatever, micho has got that decision making on lock. And his knowledge of techniques has also usually been ahead of the curve as well. One example is when Mitro started doing the ramp phase exploit into boxes. No one else was really doing it at the time. It was so new. So other pros began calling it the Mitro Classic. And remember the shockwave play back in fall skirmish? That blew everyone's mind. No one had ever seen that level of ingenuity before. And all that being said, we don't think Mitro's game sense is as ahead of the curve as it once was. All right, don't get me wrong, it's still insane. But other than a few small areas, most other pros have caught up. Okay, so how does Stretch's game sense, you know, compare? All right, well, everything about it, from big picture decisions to even the small ones, Stretch's game IQ, it's out of this world. And you can see it's really as bright as the day when, you know, you watch him play in solos. In particular, one area we notice is his decision making revolving around fights. He's one of those players that knows when a fight's not going to benefit him. <laughs> he thinks not only about winning the battle, but how it's going to affect his chances of winning the war. So when Stretch fights, he relies on mind games and outsmarting his opponent just as much as he relies on his mechanics. But if we're going to talk about Stretch's game sense, we got to talk about his legendary rotations. There is a huge reason he even won DreamHack, as he used a rotation strategy that almost no other pro did. On moving zones, he tunneled deep into the safe zone more than he needed to. And even though that could waste mats if the next zone pulled back, on times it didn't, it gave him a leg up. He'd be in a part of the circle no other players were in, and he'd just get free uncontested rotations. 
The forethought to pull out this strategy and really use it to win is the kind of smart play that you only see from the best. So who wins this category? You know, well, creativity at the level Mitro possesses is a rare thing, even amongst top pros. But if we're talking more recent, it's as if Stretch has perfected the meta. He understands so many, like, many, like, minuscule details about the game, not only when it comes to fighting, but also when it comes to winning major tournaments. So, Mitro's getting eight and a half points, and Stretch is getting nine. And now, our scores are tied. So it all comes down to the clutch factor. When the situation is, like, hectic, who's better at landing that 200 pump and securing the dub? Well, for starters, Stretch is definitely more than capable of clutching up those impossible to win scenarios. His superior game sense tends to put him in more situations where he can secure the clutch and the bag for his team, and his strong mentality keeps him calm instead of inducing panic. During the duels at FNCS, Stretch clutching up played a significant role in how well he and Booga did. Time and time again, he'd be the last alive, and somehow, some way, he'd still go on to pick up the Victor Royale. This is not easy, guys. I don't know how often we've seen Stretch and what appears to be an unwinnable situation, then bust out some ridiculous, like, five-head play to win it all. But other than that, man, it's hard to put too much emphasis on his clutches lately. While he's, you know, had his fair share of clutching with Zayden Saf, I don't know if it's all him or more his team enabling him. Either way, like if I had to bet on Stretch's clutch, I wouldn't hesitate one bit. But on the other hand, Mitra and clutching are like two old best friends. And in his case, it's not mostly game sense or just clever thinking that allows him to win tough situations. I say it's more his mechanics, his, you know, his crisp aim, his clean edits, but especially, yo, his aim. He lands shots like I know 99% of pros would never hit under pressure. And with that, he's gonna wipe enemy squads all by himself. Even way back in the old days, it wasn't uncommon to see Mitro down on the leaderboard, then have an amazing game or two and just shoot right back up. I don't know, there's just really something so simple, man, yet remarkable about the way Mitro clutches. I say the only time we've ever been like disappointed was when he legit like clapped himself with a shadow bomb in the World Cup qualifiers. It was devastating, but Mitro's the type of player to only make a mistake like one time with that. Overall, the clutch factor, it wasn't really easy to decide, but you know what? We feel that Micho has a little something that Stretch doesn't have. So, Micho's getting nine points and Stretch receives eight and a half. But it's time. All right, if we add up our scores, we've got Stretch with 44, but Micho takes the win with 44 and a half. Both of these players are super talented and in some areas, Stretch wins for sure. But overall, we believe Micho's the better player right now. All right, guys, let me know what you think, man. This was just our opinion, and, you know, this is how we rated it, but I really want to see what you guys, you know, think about this. If you guys have different scores, yo, we're all open to here, all right? We're a family, man. Understand that. We're here to back up each other. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Make sure to keep going. Bunch of crunch, army. Keep eating that bunch of crunch, and I'll see you soon. Peace.